for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this Samberg micro wireless USB dongle which will work up to 650 megabytes per second. It's priced at roughly 30 UK pounds which is roughly 33 euros and around about 37 US dollars. Again links are in the description if you wish to buy but what this actually does, it allows you to connect up wirelessly from your PC or laptop up to a router and will work up to speeds up to that 650 megabytes per second. But bear in mind, most people's internet doesn't work at that speed, so obviously it will only work up to the speed your internet actually runs at. But if you are transferring data between different machines, then obviously it will take advantage of that. Obviously if you've got a laptop or something like that, it's already got wireless built in, but some older laptops don't have the faster speeds of internet and are not able to cope with 5G or dual band or anything like this. Well this does that, so it will give you a potentially a better reception and it only just sticks out a little bit from the laptop. And if you have got a problem with your wireless adapter in your laptop, it's cheaper than going out and getting someone to fit a new one inside for you. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the packaging first. It says on the front it's Sandberg. It comes with a five year warranty, which most Sandberg products do, that we've seen. You've, it says that it's a micro Wi-Fi USB dongle, 650 megabits per second. You've got your quality check, 650 megabytes per second again, or megabits. Uh, tiny size, uh, greater performance, driver free installation, so it should just be plug and play. And it's got every version of Windows from Windows, XP and above, and even Mac OS on there. On the sides there's not much, on the back you've got your basic specifications and it tells you what speeds it will work. So let's just say if your router um, is running only on a 2.4 GHz frequency then the speed will be limited to around about 200 megabytes per second. If you've got 5G it'll work up to 433 megabytes a second and if you've got dual band it'll work up to 650 megabytes per second. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's open it up and see exactly what we've got inside. So all we've got is the mini USB adapter which is there, which is exactly what it says. It is mini. Uh, it's near enough nano size to be honest. I've seen nano ones which are roughly about the same size, maybe a couple of millimetres smaller. Obviously the bit what would stick out your computer is that bit there because this silver bit will be plugged in your USB port so you just see that little black bit sticking out. So if you are using a laptop and you want to be portable you don't have to worry too much about unplugging it all the time. Very similar sizes you get on a lot of wireless uh, mice and keyboards that come with the adapter. It's roughly the same sort of size as that. You've got your manual there. Inside it basically just shows you how to use it which you basically plug it in um, and then basically look for the uh, name of your router, type your password in and that's pretty much it. So they're usually pretty easy to use. It says driver free so um, I know a lot of dual band um, ones these days don't always pick up automatically um, with the drivers unless you are connected to the internet to begin with. So we'll see how it performs in our test PC in a few seconds. Okay, so we're connected to the internet now. I've gone onto Google and we're going to check to see what sort of speed the internet comes in at on this wireless adapter. Bear in mind, it, we're running at roughly 20 meters away from our router, so which is a wireless router, um, and we're going to see exactly what sort of speeds we get. So let's have a look. So we're just going to do a basic speed test using Google's built-in speed test and then we're going to use the other speed test program by speedtest.net. Um, and as you can see on there, we're currently getting a download speed of around about 10 megabits per second. So just on, under fractionally. Uh, and a upload speed seems to be around about 6 or 7 and then its latency is roughly running at roughly 19 milliseconds. If we do the same test again using speedtest.net, again sorry about the adverts, not much you can do about it, just to compare results, 
And on here, as you can see, it seems to be building up to go around about that 9 to 10 megabytes speed again. Uh, the ping is already at the top, which is 20 megabytes per second, sorry, 20 milliseconds. And there you go, the download speed has just finished at 9.05 megs on average, and the upload speed is around about 7 roughly, maybe 7.5 by the time it's done. And there you go, 7.24. So what I'm going to do now is connect up this tender U12. It's basically the same sort of thing again, but obviously it's dual band, but it's a lot bigger, it's a lot longer, so the aerial is going to be better in here. So we're going to just compare it in comparison, just to give you a rough idea. Okay, so with the Tender U12 plugged in, we're going to see what sort of speed the internet's going to be. So let's go and Google and do the same thing. So internet speed test. Use the built-in Google checker. And as you can see, straight away the internet speed is running drastically faster. 37, 38, so nearly 40 megabytes per second compared to 9. So there is a big difference between the devices. I think basically what it is is the larger aerial in the adapter. We plugged in or were plugged in exactly the same place. So it does make a, a huge difference. And it didn't give us an upload speed there for some reason. Um, which seems a bit strange. But we'll re run the test again. Uh, but as you can see there, we're looking at nearly 40 megabytes per second. Um, there we go. So there's your upload speed, and we're getting an upload speed. It's probably going to average out around about the eight and nine, is it? Ten. It's going up a little bit more. So eleven, roughly megabytes per second or megabits per second, with a latency of seventeen. So the latency seems to be a, a little bit better, uh, and the speed seems to be uh, drastically better. We're talking nearly a well, we are talking a four times increase. Uh, we'll try speedtest.net just to make sure. Okay, and we're getting doing the tests here. While it's not giving us as high speeds as Google by the looks of it, it's still going to give us around about the 30 mark, which is still the worst case scenario. Is three times better. So the speeds we're getting are three to four times what we were getting on the Samberg, unfortunately. Upload speed in this is giving us a slightly different speed again. It's actually higher, uh, and this is giving us a roughly 18 megabits per second upload speed. And again, the ping is 19. Okay, so in basics we've tested this to see exactly how good it was. And as you can see from the test results, it didn't give you the best performance in the world. But then again, it's not going to, compared to something what's five, ten times bigger than it. The idea of this is it's supposed to be portable, so you can stick it in a laptop without it having to stick out and so forth. It isn't going to probably improve on some laptop's wireless ca uh, capabilities. But in some cases, especially if you've got an old one or you've got a laptop what has a, a broken Wi-Fi connection and you need a, a new adapter, this is probably going to be ideal. Don't get me wrong, as I said, it isn't the fastest in the world. And we found that when we were testing it, even when um, it was right next to the router, it didn't get anywhere near the speeds advertised. Um, I think we got around about 150, 160 megabytes per second in comparison to what it quotes 650. One or two concerning things on the box, it says no drivers are needed. But strangely enough, when you plug it in, you have to install a driver. Don't get me wrong, the driver's included on there, but you do have to install it. It's probably disguised as a setup program, but it, the basics is, is once you double click the setup program, it installs a driver and then it picks it up in Device Manager. So, a little bit of confusion on the wording on there. Um, it also says on the back it's USB 2 compatible. Well, the end is black, which means that it's USB, usually USB 2, but it's not always a sign of it. But saying that, um, even though it's black on the end, it was working at USB 3 speed. So who knows, it could be USB 3, it could be USB 3.1, 3.2 compatible. Um, which obviously it's going to be compatible with all of them but you don't know what speeds it's capable of going up to. For example USB 2 
can only transfer speeds at 30 megabytes a second. We were getting about 150, so that would put it in the lines of USB 3. Um, but again, it doesn't specify in the box that it was USB 3, which would have might have been a bit helpful. But then again, as I said, this is ideal for putting on a laptop, someone who hasn't got the fastest internet from the router anyway, or something along that lines, and they just need something to use it.